thanks for the invitation. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, to be here in some form at least. Uh, so uh, what, I, what I'm speaking about, what I'm talking about is uh, uh, related to HIRA's uh, regularity structures and more precisely to what is called the structure group. And uh, the kind of element which I want to stress is that uh, we have an approach to uh, the structure group very much in the philosophy of regularity structures, which avoids trees. So in a certain sense, which replaces uh, combinatorics by um, lead geometry, as, as we will see. And uh, so this is, uh, this is joint work with uh, two PhD students, Pablo Linares and Marcus Templemeyer, who were in Vienna last week. And I think Pablo uh, gave, uh, gave a short talk on, on the same works. So you will, for those who have been there uh, last week, there will be a bit of repetition. And uh, kind of this uh, approach of uh, replacing trees, uh, the index set of trees by another a more greedy index set uh, uh, came out, grew out of uh, uh, work with uh, Jonas Sauer, Scott Smith and Hendrik Weber, uh, which is also posted and uh, where uh, this was implemented uh, 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 for the solution theory, for the deterministic solution theory. So that's where uh, the uh, uh, idea of uh, uh, replacing trees by multi-indices originated. Okay, so uh, uh, this being said, let me get uh, started by, by reminding you of uh, um, a certain perspective on uh, ordinary differential equations. Uh, so here um, uh, is a simple uh, form of a nonlinear ODE driven by uh, some rough uh, driver xi, and let's say you're interested in the initial value problem at time zero uh, uh, with homogeneous initial data. And uh, uh, one very helpful perspective on this type of problem uh, from the point of view of uh, uh, numerical treatment, uh, but also relating to the rough path perspective is to consider uh, this solution, not just as a function of time, but also as a function of the nonlinearity. So a functional of uh, the infinite dimensional space of, of nonlinearities. And uh, one immediate uh, uh, benefit of this point of view is that you realize that uh, in a certain sense, you now can uh, pass from the uh, homogeneous initial data value problem to inhomogeneous uh, initial data without doing any new work, so to say just by shifting uh, the uh, nonlinearity and by shifting the solution. So in a certain sense, by, sh by shift in U space. So, uh, uh, so this object here, which uh, at first looks a little bit impoverished because you're uh, imposing the homogeneous Dirichlet boundary, uh, homogeneous initial data, uh, in fact contains all the information uh, for uh, all initial, uh, initial data. So it gives you indeed a parametrization of the entire solution manifold. And, uh, and as, as you know, uh, uh, this is helpful uh, for, uh, for instance, recentering. If you uh, want to have homogeneous initial, initial, da uh, initial data, but not, not, not now at time t equal to zero, but at time t equal to one, uh, that can be obviously also represented this way. Uh, but in this case, you need kind of a variable shift uh, on u uh, on u space uh, so uh, the shift uh, uh, um, pi will depend on the nonlinearity so uh, let's keep this in mind that uh, uh, there is this uh, uh, this benefit uh, um, uh, on the level of odes because on the level of pdes it's um, uh, it's a little bit more subtle so uh, um, so think of uh, uh, now a PDE analog with uh, uh, also a rough driver uh, of the same form. So that type of uh, uh, structure is also sometimes called uh, the generalized parabolic Anderson uh, model, but uh, don't worry about, uh, about the name. And uh, now, um, again, you would like to play the same game and uh, parameterize the entire solution manifold. Now, this is more subtle because uh, um, there is not kind of a finite, it's not a finite dimensional solution manifold. And in fact, if you uh, 
uh, for a moment think of the uh, um, uh, the linear version of this uh, of this PDE. So by, for instance, setting a to be constant equal to one, then it's clear that the solution manifold, which is an affine space, is parameterized or can be parameterized by all caloric polynomials. So uh, uh, all poly polynomials which are annihilated by the heat operator, which here I wrote uh, uh, and which we uh, uh, like to do, which I wrote uh, in this way by uh, 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 calling the time variable x2 and the spatial variable x1 uh, to indicate that uh, uh, in a certain sense we treat both value, we, we don't make a difference between both variables. In particular, we will never use uh, semi-group theory or that kind of thing. So. Uh, uh, so, uh, so the, the, in, in the linear case, uh, that would be the solution space would be parameterized by caloric polynomials, and that uh, if you switch on the nonlinearity, you believe to you know still uh, still be a good uh, nonlinear parameterization of the nonlinear solution manifold. But in fact, it's uh, it's convenient to uh, uh, not restrict to the space of caloric polynomials, but to all polynomials. And the price to pay is that you're solving the PDE modulo polynomials. So, uh, so that's a, that's a, uh, that's a perspective which has been taken in the in the literature to think of the uh, general solution now not just uh, as being a function <clears throat> of the nonlinearity A, but also uh, a polynomial a placeholder P. And uh, uh, now the the main twist. Uh, is that uh, we want to kind of remember the benefit on the ODE level that uh, on the ODE level, uh, one didn't need this uh, polynomial variable uh, by saying we want to consider P mod constants because uh, 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 we want to have a greedy parameterization. We don't want to over parameterize and we want to kind of keep uh, a memory uh, of this uh, uh, of the ODE benefit, and uh, you'll see in a second that this has uh, kind of important consequences. And in fact, what we were guided by the the, P, the class of PDE we were guided by is not so much uh, this type of semi-linear PDE, but rather this type of quasi-linear PDE that was really what uh, what got us uh, uh, the right ideas in the work with uh, 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 Scott Smith and. Um, um, uh, and Jonas Sauer and Henrik Weber. Uh, but, uh, but in this talk, uh, uh, the talk will be entirely algebraic. And uh, so in a certain sense, you can forget about the specific class of, uh, um, of PDE or SPDE. Okay, so, um, uh, and, and that will start in a certain sense on this slide. So, uh, uh, so we have this AP space, uh, uh, the space of tuples consisting of uh, nonlinearity A and the polynomial uh, P uh, mod constants, uh, which uh, uh, here uh, we parameterize or we take the poor man's version of kind of uh, 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 imposing that the polynomial is equal to zero at the origin. But of course, the origin is a little bit arbitrary, but we'll get to that in a second. And, uh, um, and there are two important uh, actions on this space, on this AP space. Uh, so one uh, action is uh, space-time shift. So uh, shift by a space-time vector Y, so vector in R2, uh, which uh, shifts the polynomial. But in order to keep this constrained, we have to subtract the value at Y. So that again, uh, we have polynomial that vanishes at the origin. That's a certain loss of information. And this loss of information is compensated by shifting the nonlinearity uh, to the effect that the composition of A and P behaves as you would like. So that's uh, one important uh, action, which is very simple, but slightly subtle because of, this, uh, 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 because of the fact that it also has an uh, effect on the, uh, on the A. And then there is a second action, which is uh, in a certain sense simpler, namely tilt by uh, a polynomial, uh, which now doesn't have to uh, vanish at the origin. Uh, so again, we have to compensate for this and we compensate in the, sim in the same fashion as for the shift action, uh, 
uh, by um, uh, uh, by shifting the uh, shifting the nonlinearity, and in a certain sense, we recover uh, the structure group uh, as uh, as a representation of these two actions. So, in a certain sense, the the uh, what I'm going to tell you in the in the sequel is nothing else than a, a kind of a representation theory, a suitable, completely algebraic representation theory of these uh, of these two actions, which ignores. Uh, a lot of the structure, so uh, the fact that uh, a the a's uh, are an algebra, and uh, uh, the uh, the vector uh, vector space structure of the uh, of the polynomials, uh, as um, as you will see. Okay, so uh, uh, so again, uh, 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 the main uh, uh, the main goal is to uh, find a suitable matrix representation of these two very natural actions. So uh, kind of uh, here again are these two actions, uh, uh, shift and tilt, and uh, kind of a very uh, uh, easy and cheap way of, uh, um, uh, of finding already a, a representation in terms of linear endomorphisms is to uh, move to the space pi uh, of functions on AP space, uh, because then uh, uh, we can define a linear transformation of functions uh, via uh, via this transformation of AP space, so uh, so that's a that's a trick which uh, comes up in many areas of mathematics that you uh, that you linearize something by going to a higher level. And uh, uh, as I um, as I mentioned already in the beginning, uh, um, we eventually also want to have variable shifts and tilts uh, for the recentering. Uh, so in fact, both actions. Can be represented in terms of uh, uh, in terms of variable uh, uh, tilt and shift. Uh, so uh, 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 these uh, coefficients, uh, polynomial coefficients, which depend themselves on a and p, and uh, where you put the uh, non-zero coefficient here and the zero coefficient in inside the a. And uh, it's clear uh, that uh, uh, this type of um, uh, this type of structure defines a monoid uh, in the sense that uh, 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 if you uh, uh, if you have kind of uh, a set of variable tilts uh, which gives rise to one uh, endomorphism uh, um, uh, gamma star and another one uh, gamma prime star, uh, then uh, uh, the uh, composition of these two linear endomorphisms has the same structure. And is given by uh, by this type of variable tilt, and I'm using the star here uh, because, in fact, uh, as you will see, uh, those will be uh, dual uh, 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 the elements of the dual to the structure group. So, in a certain sense, we compared to Hira, uh, we adopt more of a dual perspective, which uh, we think is natural in, in, in a certain sense. And uh, so, so, so we already have a, a, a group structure here, a monoid structure, but uh, um, uh, it's not clear, or in general, there will be, there's no reason that there is an inverse. And uh, part of the work is to restrict the structure now in, in such a sense that uh, 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 these endomorphisms also have inverses. Okay, so, uh, uh, but then, uh, uh, in the end, we're aiming for matrix representation, so for a bunch of numbers. Uh, so that means uh, we have to introduce coordinates uh, on on the AP space, and uh, and we do that uh, uh, in the uh, in the usual way by it's somewhat arbitrarily fixing an origin of the one-dimensional U space and uh, an origin of space time, and then just looking at the uh, uh, at the uh, derivatives. Uh, of um, uh, uh, of a uh, at the origin and p at the origin as ways of introducing coordinates on AP space. So these coordinates are indexed by a, a, a non-negative integer k and by tuple n uh, uh, of non-negative numbers, excluding the zero because we modded out the constants. And uh, um, so it's clear that uh, any polynomial in uh, these coordinates, uh, uh, so ele any element of the polynomial algebra will give rise to function on AP space. Uh, but now the first difficulty occurs that uh, 
if we uh, uh, look at these actions, which I introduced before, at these linear endomorphisms, which I introduced before, they don't map this polynomial space into the polynomial space, but they only map the polynomial space into the formal uh, into the space of formal power series. So, uh, so the task will be uh, to construct a, a suitable subspace of the space of formal power series such that uh, um, uh, these uh, linear maps uh, are in fact automorphisms and not just endomorphisms of, uh, uh, of this base, base, base T star. And at, for the time being, the star is just notation, uh, uh, suggestive notation to indicate that what we're constructing here is the algebraic dual of what Haira would call the abstract model space. So that's, uh, um, that's the task. And uh, um, let me point out uh, that this power series algebra, in fact, is also natural, uh, not just from the point of view of the, um, uh, uh, of the structure group, as we will see, but also uh, from the point of view of the model, because um, uh, the model, so uh, again, using the language of regularity structures, so, uh, so this set of bag of functions which uh, describe the local behavior of a general solution, uh, formally, uh, from this point of view, the model pi is obtained uh, by taking a general solution, uh, which we think of as uh, a functional of AP space, and considering its partial derivatives with respect to the coordinates uh, on AP space I just introduced. And as we know from calculus, uh, partial derivatives are uh, 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 kind of organized by multi-index indices, beta, multi-indices beta, which associate uh, an integer to every k and to every n. And that is going to be our index set. So, uh, so in a certain sense, we move from, uh, from trees to multi-indices. And uh, why this is formal, uh, in fact, uh, uh, um, you, uh, uh, you can derive a hierarchy of PDEs, uh, which kind of rigorously define, at least as long as the driver uh, is smooth and uh, uh, you don't need a, a, a renormalization, but also that can be accommodated. You can, uh, uh, you can define the model by kind of a hierarchy of PDEs, uh, which, uh, which I've, uh, of which I've written down uh, uh, a couple of elements. So uh, for the amount index zero, it's just the solution to the uh, linear heat equation with uh, noise on the right-hand side. Uh, E1 corresponds to this quadratic nonlinearity on the right-hand side. And eventually you get uh, more and more complicated uh, expressions on the, uh, the right-hand side. And uh, that's the general formula, which in fact can be rewritten in a much more compact way using the algebra structure on the formal power series space as here. And, uh, but uh, one important element you learn from uh, doing this uh, for the quasi-linear equation for GPAM is that not, uh, the model is not populated is non-zero for, uh, uh, for all multi-indices beta, but only for a certain subclass, subset of multi-indices, uh, which are either uh, purely polynomial, as we say, so correspond uh, uh, to the index n, or for which uh, a certain expression is, um, is non-negative, which is this one here, which I, I'm going to explain a bit more on the next slide. So uh, because that defines our abstract model space T star as a linear subspace of the space of uh, 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 formal uh, power series. And here I should not have written span, but really uh, uh, I should have uh, written the uh, direct product, not the direct sum uh, of monomials, which are either uh, just the uh, Zn variables or uh, which are related to a, a multi-index beta for which this expression here, which is the difference of a certain length in terms of k and the length in terms of n, for which this expression is non-negative. And that expression is very natural in terms of units uh, because the first expression kind of measures something like the homogeneity in u space. And the second expression measures the homogeneity in p space and u and p have, uh, have the same units. So, uh, so this expression is natural, and that defines uh, uh, our abstract model space. 
and uh, uh, and like uh, like uh, uh, in line with uh, uh, regularity structures, this yields a natural decomposition of the abstract model space or its dual into uh, uh, the polynomial sector, which corresponds to these indices, and the remainder, which corresponds to those indices. And it's not an algebra uh, uh, because of the polynomial sector, but the blue part by its, but would again be an algebra. Okay, so that this is this is the space on which we uh, we want uh, our uh, group elements to act on, and now uh, now we we take the the perspective of um, of Lie algebra, meaning that uh, we identify uh, the infinitesimal generators uh, uh, and then build the Lie group from there. So the building blocks, the most important infinitesimal generators uh, are the generators of the shift in U, which is written down here, the tilt in P uh, by uh, a polynomial that, or by, by monomial that vanishes at the origin and the shift in, uh, in, in space and likewise the shift, the X2 shift, the shift in time, which is uh, this, uh, uh, this expression here. So, uh, um, uh, so here again uh, uh, um, are these uh, uh, generators, the generators of the U-shift, the generators of the XN tilt, the polynomial tilt, and the generators of the space shift and the time shift. And now I express them uh, completely algebraically in terms of a derivation on the set of formal uh, power series. So, uh, uh, so here is... Uh, the, uh, the formula, uh, the effectively finite sum for the uh, shift uh, in U, uh, that's the simple expression for the tilt. And that's the, uh, in a certain sense, the most complex expression for the uh, uh, um, uh, shift in, in space and likewise for time. Uh, so, uh, so those are well-defined as derivations on, uh, on the algebra of form the power series and in fact, despite the fact that we obtained them in a, in a somewhat strange way by modding out constants, uh, their commutators behave as if we had them defined as usual shift and tilt on polynomials. So that's what I wrote down here. So, uh, 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 so on the abstract Lie algebraic level, they behave uh, in a natural way, but they act on, on, on a space uh, uh, that's uh, uh, um, uh, uh, that's perhaps slightly uh, slightly non-standard. And uh, um, now we we go one step further. Uh, those were the building blocks for uh, the Lie algebra. But uh, uh, as I mentioned, we also want to have something like variable tilt. So we want to enrich the space by our derivations times a multiplication operator with the polynomial uh, z to the power gamma. And that's again uh, uh, a derivation. And uh, uh, now we look at the collection of these infinitely many uh, derivations, the, uh, uh, the space and the time shift, and these uh, uh, combinations of uh, um, uh, the end derivatives and multiplication operators, which uh, uh, provided we restrict to uh, exponents which have uh, uh, non-negative, uh, uh, for which this expression is non-negative, in fact, preserve T star, so our endomorphisms of T star and uh, T tilde star. Um, so uh, since, since those are derivations on, uh, on this flat space of uh, power series, uh, the uh, Lie product, in fact, uh, arises naturally from the pre-Lie product, uh, which is just the covariant derivative. And uh, uh, and you uh, can easy one can easily compute these uh, Prelie products between the elements uh, uh, between the elements uh, between these elements in the uh, in the Lie algebra, and you realize that uh, uh, this uh, uh, this set of elements is not closed uh, because of the uh, uh, because of the shift in space time, where uh, the Prelie product would not be. Uh, a linear combination of these things. So we don't quite have a pre Lie algebra, but let's say uh, it fails just because of two elements out of this uh, infinite list of elements, and that will play a role in a second. Um, 
We also have uh, uh, two natural gradations. So we have a bigradation on, uh, um, on these uh, 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 elements of um, uh, uh, what's going to be Lie algebra. Uh, uh, one, uh, the first component is made out of this type of homogeneity, which I introduced before. And the second component has more to do with the polynomial part. And, uh, uh, and the, the presence of these two gradations motivates something which is well known in 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 uh, uh, in, in, homo uh, in um, <clears throat> uh, regularity structures namely it motivates uh, uh, what Hira calls or what's called the homogeneity which is a, a specific uh, 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 combination uh, between the two uh, between roughly speaking between these two gradations uh, and involves um, uh, a, a number, Natural, I mean, uh, um, a real number, a positive number alpha. And now, uh, now equipped with this uh, gradation and with the homogeneity, uh, we can now define uh, what we want to consider as our uh, Lie group, namely the span of uh, uh, the two shift uh, space time shifts and these uh, uh, variable tilt operators where uh, the exponent gamma and the uh, number n are restricted uh, uh, by, this, uh, by this condition. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, it doesn't quite, it's not closed under the pre lee product, but just uh, because of the first two operators here, uh, um, uh, it's, um, uh, it's, it's, it has a triangular structure with respect to the homogene homogeneity, which is kind of important for regularity structures. And uh, 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 now uh, we feed this into uh, uh, this uh, uh, Lie algebra L, which uh, is a Lie algebra because despite the fact that uh, uh, these space-time shifts uh, are not closed under the pre lee structure, uh, they obviously commute. So it is, uh, it is a Lie algebra. And uh, uh, um, given this Lie algebra of uh, derivations, we take now a completely abstract point of view. We think uh, of them as letters of an alphabet, which is indexed by this uh, index set. And now we crank the machinery. Uh, we built the universal enveloping algebra, uh, uh, which, is, uh, which is Hopf algebra by taking the, uh, 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 um, the tensor space and modding out by things which can be uh, identified because of the uh, uh, relations uh, given by the Lie bracket. And uh, uh, so, so UVL is kind of, uh, if you want uh, um, abstract words uh, with, uh, um, uh, um, with an equivalence relation given by the, uh, um, uh, by the um, uh, Lie bracket. But at the same time, uh, we can still identify, or well, identify is perhaps not the right word, we can associate to uh, every abstract element an actual endomorphism, uh, a matrix on our space T star. But, uh, uh, but this representation is no longer faithful. It's no longer one-to-one -one in a certain sense. We have a much finer description on this, uh, on this abstract level, which is, uh, which is helpful. So that's going to be the Hopf algebra structure. And now let me come back for a moment to this pre lee structure, uh, because despite the fact uh, uh, that uh, we don't have really a, a full-blown pre lee structure, uh, we have a pre lee structure on a large subset of our uh, um, uh, Lie, uh, Lie algebra L tilde. And uh, so uh, that gives us, as is known by the work of Houdon and Gouin, uh, that gives us uh, uh, kind of a nice special structure on the universal enveloping algebra of the smaller uh, uh, Lie algebra in terms of uh, 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 being canonically isometric to the uh, symmetric, uh, symmetric algebra. So meaning we have canonical, a canonical basis uh, on, this, uh, uh, on the subspace. Um, on the other hand, this space is large enough to control, uh, to contain the entire derived algebra and is an ideal. Uh, that means uh, uh, via the natural map uh, uh, between the universal enveloping algebra of L and the, uh, and the quotient, uh, we can factorize uh, U of L 
into uh, um, linearly factorized into uh, uh, parts which correspond, uh, which are indexed by uh, by tuples m and which in a certain sense correspond to the space time derivations. And the pre Lie product uh, uh, is well defined if only the first uh, factor is in the smaller space. And that allows us to uh, uh, identify each of these components with SL. And roughly speaking, that gives us uh, 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 a distinguished basis on the entire space UVL, despite the fact that we don't really have a kind of a full pre Lie structure. And that that's uh, that basis uh, is 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 the uh, uh, the important structure. So uh, uh, it, in in a certain sense, it allows us to canonically index or canonically uh, identify the universal enveloping algebra as a direct sum of multi indices over the index set uh, given uh, describing the uh, uh, the Lie algebra. So uh, that's what I'm repeating here. So the Lie algebra has this, uh, has this index set here, and we should think of it as the span of these uh, very variable uh, tilt operators and these space-time shift operators. And the universal enveloping algebra has an index set which consists of multi-indices of this set, and we should think of it as uh, the linear span of this type of, uh, this type of objects, which type of words. And equipped with uh, uh, with this uh, 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 with this structure or with the spaces, uh, we get a canonical pairing between uh, the dual side, so the universal enveloping algebra in T star, and uh, direct sums which are indexed by J, uh, um, so uh, uh, giving rise to polynomial uh, algebra because the uh, uh, the co-product on UL turns into uh, kind of the standard product uh, uh, on the dual side, and uh, uh, and the uh, uh, the dual side of T star gives rise to uh, uh, the um, um, the uh, uh, the abstract model space. So uh, uh, so now on the dual side, uh, uh, from the finiteness properties which are given to us by 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 the bigradation. Uh, we can kind of translate the concatenation, the standard concatenation product on the universal enveloping algebra into a co-product. And we can translate the, uh, uh, the canonical representation of elements of the universal al uh, algebra in terms of endomorphism into a co-module. And, uh, uh, and what we get for free uh, from this structure is the intertwining between uh, a co uh, uh, product and co module, uh, which is one of Hira's postulates uh, that, in a certain sense, comes out automatically out of uh, out of our structure. And uh, uh, so once uh, uh, once we have this uh, uh, this Hopf algebra structure, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, go to the uh, to the structure group in the uh, in, in the usual sense. Uh, we look at uh, all multiplicative elements of the dual of uh, T plus, uh, which was itself the dual of UVL. And uh, uh, then together with the co-product, uh, that defines uh, a product on, uh, on the space of G, uh, making it into, uh, uh, into a group. And uh, the co-module uh, then allows us to identify these abstract group elements with, with actual endomorphisms on T. So uh, in the end, uh, uh, we got to the structure group in a, in a completely algebraic way, although uh, it was guided in a certain sense by, by lead geometry. So we started from actions on AP space. Uh, we considered their generators, which defines the Lie algebra. And then we, uh, uh, in a certain sense, want to jump to the Lie group. Uh, but we do that by uh, first constructing the universal algebra and then uh, uh, looking at its uh, kind of pre-dual or constructing a pairing with the deep T plus and then use Hopf, Hopf, uh, Hopf, Hopf theory to get to G, which is the pointwise dual of G star. So that's the, uh, instead of kind of the analytic way of going from the Lie algebra to the Lie group, uh, we use this uh, Hopf uh, algebraic way of uh, going there. Um, 
So, uh, uh, so it can be easily checked that, uh, 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 that this uh, uh, accomplishes the task we, uh, we started uh, out with. Uh, uh, it can be checked that uh, it contains both uh, the space-time shift, which we wanted it to contain at the beginning, and uh, also the uh, variable tilt, polynomial tilt, uh, the two actions we started with. So it's, uh, uh, it was indeed uh, uh, kind of a way of uh, finding a representation of these two actions. How much time do I still have? Okay. So, um, uh, so let me, uh, uh, let me uh, show you um, in um, uh, how this connects to, uh, uh, to the tree-based uh, uh, structures by looking at the, um, uh, by looking at the example of uh, uh, GPAM, uh, so uh, a generalized parabolic Anderson model, uh, where uh, uh, we, I wrote down the, uh, the way we construct uh, our model by writing down uh, uh, elements in the uh, a couple of uh, uh, steps in the hierarchy by which we define the model given the multi-index beta. Uh, in this case, we even have kind of a, a more severe population condition, uh, which is this one here. And uh, uh, one also uh, uh, sees that the model does have redundancies uh, in the way it incorporates the, uh, uh, the polynomials, uh, 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 which, uh, which uh, will kind of uh, prompt a remark in a second. And here is, uh, here is how Haira, uh, thinks of the uh, uh, model or builds the abstract model space uh, uh, in, in a more combinatorial way uh, by uh, having in a certain sense, three symbols, the noise, uh, uh, the spatial polynomial, the time polynomial, and two operations, the operation of integrating, which uh, pictorially means adding an edge, and the integration of uh, multiplication, which uh, means a joining at the root. And here are a couple of examples how uh, a, a certain iteration of these elements and operations can be represented by, by trees, in fact, by decorated trees uh, as indicated here. So uh, here you have, uh, have the cherry and here you have kind of uh, already decorated uh, tree, which involves three, decoration, three decorations, three noises and, uh, and a polynomial. So that's kind of a, a, a quite different, uh, a different description and uh, also a quite different model. Uh, but uh, it's not difficult uh, to construct a dictionary between uh, our index set of multi-indices beta and the index set of Haira, which uh, consists of trees. And um, And uh, uh, which is given in this uh, in this recursive way here, um, uh, and uh, uh, but perhaps it's more telling to look uh, at uh, at a certain type of example. So this uh, this monomial uh, corresponds. Oops, this monomial corresponds to the noise um, uh, when 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 phi minus acts on it. When phi acts on it, it uh, corresponds to the integrated noise. Uh, that corresponds to the product between noise and polynomial. Uh, that corresponds to uh, uh, um, the product between noise, polynomial, integrated, and so on. Um, there are two observations. The first observation is that uh, uh, these maps, which connect uh, our abstract model space and the one of Haira, are not onto. Uh, so in a certain sense, our description is more greedy because our monomials uh, correspond to linear combinations of trees, as this example shows. But on the other hand, it's also not one-to-one. -one. So uh, that has to do with the redundancies I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, uh, behind one tree, uh, there might be uh, two different multi-indices. So, uh, uh, so this linear map we constructed, or these two linear maps we constructed between uh, our model space indexed by beta and Haira's model space indexed by trees is neither uh, onto nor uh, one to one. 
but still, um, uh, uh, it is uh, the linear map that intertwines the structures from regularity uh, structures. So the co the co product, uh, sorry, the co module of Hira. And so we, yeah. at this time, you should be more or less finishing. Uh, yes, sorry. Yes. I'm all, uh, I, I did ask uh, five minutes ago and uh, didn't get an answer. So I'm almost finished. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so this shows that uh, uh, the structure we're doing, uh, we're we're introducing in uh, a specific case uh, are intertwined, are canonically intertwined with the uh, with the structures which you get from combinatorics, and but the intertwining will depend on the model. So, in a certain sense, uh, GPAM quasi-linear five four three. May, are sitting in different ways in our structure. Uh, you have different kind of intertwining maps, uh, but uh, in a certain sense, our structure contains these, uh, 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 in a certain sense, contains these, uh, these other structures. There is a, uh, there is a connection between, um, uh, between uh, the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the pre lee structure uh, in our case, and uh, uh, the pre lease structure of tr tree grafting, uh, that is best seen in uh, the simpler setting of branched rough path, uh, where uh, uh, where the uh, transpose of the uh, dictionary, which I introduced, is a pre lee algebra morphism. In the general case, uh, our structure is not a, a pre lee algebra, so in the general case, uh, uh, the relationship. Uh, between tree grafting and our previous structure, our incomplete previous structure is a bit more uh, subtle. Okay, so last, I'm, I'm going to finish. Uh, uh, so also renormalization fits this uh, 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 tree-free uh, uh, framework. And uh, we're about to finish the uh, uh, stochastic estimates uh, in a completely tree and diagram free way uh, using uh, uh, rather Malyavin calculus. So, uh, so in a certain sense, the message or where we want to get at is that uh, um, for interesting classes of uh, SPDE, uh, it might be actually interesting to uh, not use trees at all, but uh, work with this, uh, uh, this different type of index set, uh, which is given by multi-indices. Okay. I stop. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Sorry for, I mean, I lost connection for a moment. Uh, my internet connection in my hotel is very unstable. Uh, so do, do, do you hear me? Yes, I do. No? Okay. Uh, so could, um, so we will start of the so There's a problem with your connection. It's not the problem. case anymore. Uh, sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, we didn't hear what you said that your ah, connection is well. very uh, unstable. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, probably my in, the internet connection uh, in the hotel is bad. I mean, I, I switched to another one, but it, it's not, it doesn't seem to be working very well. Uh, um, so, uh, is the discussant uh, Rosa Pride uh, 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 connected, or uh, I mean, I I saw that uh, I I believe that I saw her name uh, some time ago. But now I cannot see if so. Yeah, she was she was around, uh, but because she said that she got tested, if I'm not mistaken, and I sent him, uh, I sent her a, a, a message, uh, an internal message saying that we will be starting the discussions part at uh, more or less ten past ten. But uh, I don't know if she's connected now. I'm not seeing her in the list of people connected, so. So I, I, I don't know, you, you let me know what I should do. Maybe I could add, the, I just talked to the AZ. 
Yeah. And I think the procedure is those that get tested, meaning a PCR test, they, and I mean, assuming they have a negative test, they can uh, go to Hi, ASD. everyone. I'm talking to Rosa on Skype. She has technical problems with Zoom. She needs five minutes. Okay, great. So maybe let's take the opportunity to drink some water, coffee, or whatever maybe else. Let me make, maybe let me make an announcement that uh, with a negative PCR test, we can go to AZ. But AZ somehow thinks that we should move the meeting online, which means, well, we could still, we could go to the Institute, we could use our offices, we could use the Institute, but we should not have meetings we should not have a meeting in the in the lecture hall. Okay. Uh, Did so you hear me? Just, just one question concerning the PCR test. Uh, uh, if the information that France was uh, sent before was uh, uh, corrected, and I would be, uh, of course I believe that it, it is, we should get tested today before two p.m. Uh, right. Um, right. That would that would uh, that would mean that uh, you could you get you the result for tomorrow. Your result, you should re receive your result before two p.m. tomorrow, and yeah. then in principle, one can go to to the institute if this is what one yeah, prefers. That, that but, means that. Um, that means that we yes? have to move to. That means that we. Will be we'll have to move some somehow the schedule in order that people get tested before two p.m. Right? Yeah, I, that, that 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 my question was intended in that direction, precisely. Yes. yes, yes. It seems that uh, this is the case. Yes, somehow we, if we want to to get uh, tested and, and use this time window till two p.m., then we should do this now. But on the other hand, uh, the fact is that that AZ is not really uh, in favor of uh, returning to the lecture hall, right? Somehow okay. the, the message I got was that uh, they would prefer that regarding the meeting, regarding the talks, we should, we should stick to the uh, online option. Okay. Uh, in my but we could do this. Anything. Yeah, please go ahead, sorry. Ima wanted to say something, right? Who? Imma, are you are you around? No. The, she has raised her hand. Uh huh. Uh huh. But uh, Imma, do you do you want it to say something? Yeah. Okay. No. Maybe. Maybe okay. not. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, can we use the time for a, a, math, a maths question? Yes. Uh, hi, Felix. Uh, thank you for your nice talk. Hi. In, in the very end, you spoke mm -hmm. about Mullivan calculus replaces Feynman diagrams. Can you elaborate on this? Right. That, so that's. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So that's the that's this uh, ongoing work or new completion with. Uh, uh, with uh, Lenaris Tempelmeyer and Satsoulis, where uh, we uh, uh, derive, where we prove uh, the stochastic estimates on the model. And uh, so also there, uh, we don't need to uh, kind of go all the way down to trees, but we directly uh, estimate uh, 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 the, op you know, the objects we defined in terms of multi-indices and uh, the the working horse uh, uh, for getting the estimates is the spectral gap inequality, uh, which in a certain sense, in an ideal way, fits to uh, this BPHZ choice of renormalization, right? BPHZ choice of renormalization means that you're choosing your renormalizing constant in such a way that certain expectations vanish. Right. And uh, when you already control the expectation of your model, uh, all you need to control is the variance. And the spectral gap estimate is a way of estimating the variance of a random variable or random field. 
uh, in terms of uh, a suitable norm of its Mayavan derivative. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, so what we have to con in order to get our stochastic estimates, what we have to do is we have to control Mayavan derivatives of the model, uh, which again is a kind of an analytic tool and not a combinatorial one. So, uh, so we can do that in an automated, automated inductive way. Uh, um, uh, and that this is how we estimate the model. So we never have to, we have, we never have to kind of uh, 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 use a, a tree or a diagram. Okay, but the stochastic objects you need to estimate, do they yes. live, I suspect they live in finite binaito chaos, is that correct? They do, yes. But, but, but in a certain sense, we, we don't need a Gaussian noise, right? So, uh, uh, so the spectral gap, uh, uh, right. spectral gap okay. assumption is more general. So we don't we don't use uh, any um, any Gaussian calculus, and in fact, uh, 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 therefore also uh, we don't uh, we don't see certain cancellations which are only due there to the Gaussian case. Right. So we therefore, also have... you, therefore you're correct, but in some sense it's irrelevant for us because we're not thinking in terms of. Uh, um, a Gaussian. Okay. The first Thank you very thing much. I want to start with. So basically, what my what I looked at for my discussion is like even though like uh, Felix Otto's approach is kind of like putting emphasis on this shifts and tilts and was uh, getting away a bit from the combinatorics. Uh, I nevertheless. Uh, yeah, it took the freedom to have a kind of combinatorial look uh, on the proposed top file chipra. And especially I wanted it to compare to uh, to the BH sets, so Prune, Heirat, Zambotti, uh, top file chipra. And uh, just to start, here's an example, like just so that most people don't know get kind of an impression of what uh, theoretically a uh, basis element of uh, of a BH set uh, positive normalization of algebra could look like. So what you see in this picture is like a tree I drew, like an example tree. Uh, I don't know, it's pr probably not very practical, but from the theoretical algebraic side, it's, uh, I think it makes sense. Uh, in this uh, BH set algebraic renormalization framework. So you have, I hope you can kind of see it, uh, like uh, the root is colored in green. I know it's not very uh visible but the root is colored in green and we have three red nodes and all the others are white so we have uh so it's like a tree in this framework consists of a lot of different uh like labelings and types and so there's different colors like three different colors like uncut one of them is uncolored of nodes we have different edge types which i denoted by like a straight edge and a wiggly edge and uh, every node uh, first every edge cat uh, carries a decoration which corresponds to like uh, derivatives of the kernel and uh, then also every node catches uh, carries a decoration with a multi-index i've had uh, here it's a three-dimensional example like every node carries a decoration with a multi-index uh, and actually the the red nodes carry even more multi-indexes uh, so this uh, red and the additional multi-index for red nodes, this has something to do with uh, with an extension of uh, 
of uh, regularity structure and was the hop algebra they did to have some co interact very nice co interaction property so in the simplest case you can leave it away uh, and the other node decoration correspond to polynomials so like so i just wanted to have this here to like uh, have a comparison like how like how also like how complex these basis elements of the Hopf algebra can get in the uh, BHZ framework. Um, and now uh, to the framework presented by Felix Otto. So where we have the uh, our vector space which uh, the when we extended to hop algebra t plus uh, is generated by a basis set set jm over multi index indices and so uh, you have to think about uh, these basis element set jm actually as a dual basis to the differential operators djm uh, which are like defined as I wrote it down here from from the elementary elementary like derivations del one del two and uh, dn uh, and now like this index set is already not so simple you have uh, like m m is the simplest part it's just uh, uh, a binary multi-index and well J is a bit more involved it's actually a multi-index on multi-indices like gamma n denote uh, multi-indices already and now you have a multi-index composed out of like multi-indices and so I gave an example here. So, uh, so here J prime M prime is a multi index, uh, is a double multi index. So, the easy part is the M prime, it's just two numbers. Uh, but uh, the J prime part, uh, like so. These are now like multi indices in those already multi indices, uh, gamma one, n one, and gamma two, n two. So, uh, yeah, uh, to gamma one, n one is assigned uh, for number, uh, three, and to gamma two, n two, the number two. And then gamma one, gamma two are again multi indices, uh, like where you have a single uh, number part and uh, a binary multi-index uh, as I wrote down here. So this is really like a bit nested, uh, the structure of these multi-indices and actually not all of them are allowed. Uh, like J is, the J part is restricted. It's only those. Uh, it uh, can only be supported on those uh, gamma n such that this gamma bracket is uh, greater zero. Uh, so somehow the uh, uh, the singleton part dominates over the binary part. And then you have uh, um, a part which is written as absolute value of gamma. So here actually, here the al an alpha regularity comes in. That's, uh, yeah. So that's, uh, that will depend on the regularity of your equation. And uh, this gamma part is, yeah, so this gamma, Absolute value is supposed also to be bigger than the n 
absolute value in question where n is just a binary uh, index so it's uh, so the absolute value is just the sum of the uh, um, the sum of the indices so I hope that uh, I understood that uh, kind of correctly so this is just to show you how the like basic structure like the basic like what you will then calculate with on the top algebra and so this actually leads to already my first question like uh if there is a, a more efficient convenient notation for this multi-indices on multi-indices because it's a bit tedious to write down like it would be nice to have some kind of convenient notation where we just intuitively know what where to put which numbers like uh like in the tree case like this seems this is complex but at least like yeah we get kind of an intuition like how uh how to write down basis elements and here it's it's not yet clear to me i have to say but uh, if yeah if I guess you can up, can come up with something nice if you give it a bit of thought. So that would be my first question, like how to write down these multi-indices and multi-indices more efficiently to be actually able to quickly calculate with it. To first come now to the normalization of algebra has a very simple product structure. Uh, the product just corresponds. Uh, can you still hear me? Uh, I, I, we do, but I think that uh, it, uh, there is some issue with the connection. Yes, yes, I also saw that. Uh, can you, so you can still hear me and see the slides? Yeah, the slides, we can see them. And you just uh, change them. Uh, uh, yeah okay yeah it won't be want me that my connection is unstable like but yeah let's just keep going and hope the best uh so the product here is uh is very simple it's a commutative associative product where uh, we just add the multi-indices and then we have a multiplicative co-product like multiplicative that it's multiplicative is part of the definition of uh, uh, and uh, since it's multiplicative generators and they fall in like three uh, classes so two of them down are very simple so for this uh so this for this m part uh um for the atoms where uh the uh you just get that uh that these are primitive elements with respect to the core product and uh now uh, the interesting part is the J part, uh, where you get where you get a co-product co with two parts, with a differential part and a polynomial part. Uh, so the second one, the polynomial part, is for people fluent in uh, in the uh, in Hira's framework, which which might already look familiar. Um, uh, why the differential part is what is new here what is interesting here uh we get actually a co coefficient which is just given by interpreting these djms so i gave you here the definition of uh, uh, interpreting this really now as a differential operator uh on this uh, space of polynomials uh uh, set gamma, which is actually what will be the co-module, 
and like applying this to some set beta and then uh, get the set gamma coefficient. This is what I wrote like in my a bit in my notation with this uh, this pairing. And uh, what surprised me when I first wrote this line, I thought I, I'd made a mistake. Uh, this first sum, like, how can this be finite? But it's actually a lemma in their paper that this is uh, a finite sum that, this, uh, that you only get for each uh, uh, gamma n. You only get finitely many JMs and betas. With, uh, with such as this beta bracket is greater than zero and such with beta is bigger than uh, that uh, apps beta is uh, bigger than apps uh, n. And uh, so, yeah, this this has really something to do with uh, like, especially the, uh, the bracket part of uh, beta is really tailor-made to ensure this, but uh, that this will be a finite sum. And so, uh, so this works, so this will be a finite sum, so it's uh, a legitimate co-product. Uh, what, would, uh, what would one, of course, have to check that it's co-associative, what that will be the case. And then, uh, yeah, we also have a graduation, which I don't have on my slides, which makes it when a connected graded first by algebra, but then it's automatically uh, 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 Hopf algebra. And yeah, so my second question maybe is like, uh, if there's a nice, uh, like if there's also some nice formula for the antipode, that would be interesting. Uh, because in a high framework, there's at least for the, for the uh, positive phenomenalization antipode, there's at least uh, like a recursive, direct recursive formula. And yeah, well, I, uh, you can definitely write down something here, but yeah, uh, the question is do you get something nice out there or yeah, or not? Um, another way to write this co product is actually via the, uh, via the uh, co model structure, and here I have. I see that I'm missing a symbol, yes. Uh, 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 I'm very sorry. Uh, in the second equation, uh, uh, so here I was on the slide, I don't know how much you've seen. I was just trying to explain that you can reduce actually uh, the core product like the interesting part of the co-product to the co module structure. Uh, and when I realized that here is a typo, um, uh, so it should be like uh, where you see this indices n and m plus n without uh, uh, without uh, uh, like an object which corresponds to it, uh, where it should be a J, which is a map that lifts an element from the core module to the to the hop file shipper. and from that you can actually see that it's very very similar to uh, to. Uh, to hire us uh, co-product. So uh, that was actually already my little, yeah, um, discussion of the hop algebra structure, like, uh, which was also like how I tried to understand this hop algebra. Um, uh, and it helped me to write it down in, in, in like, uh, this way here in the middle. So this formula is, I think, not in the paper, but it helped me to write it down like this. 
uh, to really see where the different parts come from that you have with, uh, um, with differential, like the coefficients of a differential operator applied to the uh, core module uh, as the main part of this co-product. And from here, so I wrap up again, like my questions and my first question is kind of like, is there a more convenient notation for the multi-indices of multi-indices? And then also a question, which also maybe uh, Pablo and Marcus have some uh, idea on what would be, uh, what could we imagine the renormalization group to look like? Uh, like, is there a nice, uh, um, like, uh, uh, like, nice uh, T minus uh, Hopf algebra associated to it? And actually, do we recover like a co interaction property, like in Kunihara Zambotti, between uh, the positive renormalization and the negative renormalization? Uh, so, the positive renormalization meaning the recentering the structure group. So, is there, do, can we expect such a core interaction property? And the, quest, uh, the last question is I don't have here is like, what might the antipode look like? And does the antipode uh, have a nice interpretation? Can we also expect to have like twisted antipodes like uh, in Punei Zambotti or is the renormalization done in a different way? Yeah, so that's my, that was my discussion and my questions. And thank you for your attention. And I hope you at least got something despite all the technical trouble. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, perhaps uh, just to give the opportunity uh, to Felix to reply to this, uh, if he wants. Uh, yes, uh, I can. I can try to. Uh, so. So first of all, um, in a certain sense, our structure, I think, is very clear on the level of the universal enveloping algebra, the Lie, uh, uh, the Lie algebra. And, uh, and then we're, in a certain sense, just dualizing it uh, with help of a, of a natural basis, which is uh, given by the pre li structure. And then... Uh, then, if you write it down in indices, uh, that's what you uh, uh, what you see. But in fact, uh, in the renormalization paper for the quasi-linear, we never need that. I mean, we don't need the uh, uh, to uh, to calculate these things. Uh, so, uh, um, therefore, we are not in a yeah. We, we're we're not in a kind of in, in, in this necessity to dig that deep into uh, the specific uh, the specific multi indices. I think what I mean the main benefit is that uh, in our language, at least in case of the quasi linear, we get uh, uh, much fewer. I don't remember the exact numbers, but perhaps half or a third of the counter terms. So it's. Uh, it's closer to the symmetry of the problem uh, because you're uh, compared to the tree-based uh, representation, you're grouping things together uh, from the point that's relevant for your renormalization. So it's a, it's a more greedy, it's a more efficient uh, description which reduces the number of counter terms. And, uh, and the other, so I think, uh, I think, uh, I, I don't remember, but Pablo and, uh, um, uh, and uh, Marcus have thought about the antipode. Of course, since it's a universal enveloping algebra, the antipode is very explicit. And now the question is, how does it look like on the dual level? Uh, I don't remember because uh, there was a general result that uh, this dualization preserves the, uh, preserves the antipode. And for the renormalization group and the intertwining, that's, uh, that's indeed an interesting, uh, 
interesting uh, um, uh, subject. Uh, in, in our paper, we wrote something on the level of branched rough path that it uh, uh, kind of fits nicely together. And uh, uh, I can tell you that it works on the level of quasi linear equations with BPHZ type renormalization. But the general case is very interesting. And that's something uh, uh, Pablo uh, is, uh, has started thinking about. So